The U.S. Naval Propellant Plant is a Navy-owned and operated propellant center of the Bureau of Naval Weapons. This building houses some of the research laboratories of the establishment. The scientists and engineers working here are engaged in propellant research and development. Here are created new techniques in chemical formulations for solid propellants and other high energy fuels required by the Navy for tomorrow's defense weapons. One of the scientists who has made many contributions to the propellant field is Dr. Otto Reitlinger. Dr. Reitlinger is a former technical consultant to the torpedo division of the Bureau of Naval Weapons and is now a consultant to the Naval Propellant Plant. One of his most recent inventions is a new liquid monopropellant. The discovery named after him is called Otto Fuel II. This liquid is a mixture of a nitrate ester with a diluent and a stabilizer. Unlike conventional liquid propellants, Otto Fuel is a monopropellant, that is, it contains both fuel and oxidizer in a single stable fluid. Liquid propellants are commonly thought to be extremely unsafe and to present fire and toxicity hazards. Autofuel was carefully designed to minimize these, and extensive testing has shown that only a few basic precautions are required to handle autofuel in complete safety. Autofuel II was developed, in fact, to respond to a definite need by the fleet. It was specifically prepared to be used as a propellant for torpedoes. Autofuel is important because of three factors, safety, logistics, and operational efficiency. Autofuel is carefully tailored to provide optimum efficiency and economy in the weapons in which it is used. Logistically, it is a compact, conveyable, controllable source of energy. From the safety standpoint, it is flame resistant, comparatively non-toxic, and shock insensitive. After original studies in the laboratory, auto fuel was first proved in 1960 when it was successfully ignited in a rocket motor at the naval propellant plant. The clean, colorless exhaust is one of the main advantages of this propellant. Although the motor is actually being fired, the only way you can tell it is by noticing the vibration of the surrounding parts. In actual operation, auto fuel is made to work something like this. It is put under pressure to force it through a spray which is located inside the combustion chamber. The spray is ignited and it burns, creating a powerful jet of hot gases. The energy of this hot gas is then harnessed to provide power to the screw. Auto fuel was subsequently tested for shock at the Naval Weapons Laboratory, Dahlgren, Virginia. Four years of testing and experimentation with auto fuel at NPP have not resulted in a single accident. One of the many tests conducted upon auto fuel at Dahlgren included 20 millimeter cannon fire against simulated torpedo fuel tanks. Despite the tremendous impact and shock of the bullet, there is no explosion. Auto fuel is not classed as a flammable material because of its high flame temperature about 260 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, it is difficult to ignite even with a propane torch. However, it is much more easily ignited when poured or spilled on a material which acts as a wick, such as paper, rags, trash, or even such normally non-flammable materials as wall insulation or pipe insulation.
When you put a can of gasoline in a bonfire with the cap or lid left off the can, and you cause a flame or fire to reach the open can of gasoline, it may burn something like this. Now, when we do the same thing with auto fuel, with the cap or lid left off the can, the bonfire heats up the auto fuel and the decomposition vapors escape through the open vents in the top of the can. These ignite, and you can see two torches of flame shooting out the top of the can. If the heating rate is great enough, or if the vent area is insufficient, the decomposition rate increase may cause the container to burst. Auto fuel as a propellant is and must be a very potent substance. Now we're going to look at some conditions under which this energy may be released in an uncontrolled manner. For example, auto fuel must never be placed in closed containers without an adequate pressure relief device. And especially, closed containers should never be heated because when auto fuel is confined and heated above 290 degrees Fahrenheit in a container such as this, the container will burst. A container made of pipe naturally has heavier walls than ordinary fuel cans. And when filled with auto fuel and sealed, the container becomes, in actuality, a bomb. When this bomb is subjected to heat, it will burst with more force than the container with thin walls. To help prevent fires, bursts, and explosions, which are a result of the buildup of pressure and heat, all approved containers have an adequate pressure relief device in proper working condition. Irresponsible safety attitudes, indifference to safety regulations, bad housekeeping practices should never be tolerated. Trash, litter, spills, and carelessness all contribute to the possibility of fires and potential disaster. At Bethesda, Maryland, the area of toxicity, the hazard to health, is being tested by the toxicology unit of the Navy Medical Center. Tests made here show that there are certain ill effects if auto fuel is taken internally, inhaled, or gets on the skin. Toxic effects vary with the concentration, length of exposure, and temperature. Inhalation of the vapors from spilled auto fuel is to be avoided. Personnel entering confined areas where a spill has occurred must wear an activated charcoal breathing apparatus. Vapors can cause headaches and on occasion, severe nausea. Because auto fuel is a new product, the chronic effects of long-term exposure to it are as yet unknown. That is why toxicity tests are continuing. To avoid these toxic effects, certain safety procedures must be followed whenever there is any possibility of spilling auto fuel, either ashore or at sea. Boots and neoprene gloves must be worn whenever there is the possibility of getting the material on your skin. Whenever there is a chance of a spray or of splashing auto fuel, a neoprene apron and full face shield should be worn. If auto fuel does come in contact with the skin, such areas should be immediately and thoroughly washed with soap and lukewarm water.
A shower must be taken if any appreciable amount of auto fuel comes in contact with the clothing or skin. A thorough washing with soap and water is essential. Special care should be taken to thoroughly cleanse and flush out the eyes and nose. All contaminated clothing must be washed, completely dried and aired before being put away or worn again. This is still another reason why exposure should be reduced to a minimum and skin areas guarded by protective clothing. To avoid headaches and nausea, periods of breathing auto fuel vapors, particularly when not using a breathing apparatus, must be frequently interrupted for fresh air breaks. For storage and shipping purposes, auto fuel 2 is classified as a non-regulated item, that is, non-explosive and non-flammable. It is stored in tanks or drums, either fixed or mobile, of approved design, materials, and construction. All storage buildings must be fire resistant, provide adequate shade and weather protection, ventilation, and lightning rods. Water sprinklers or CO2 fire extinguishers are provided. If personnel may be exposed to splashing of auto fuel, safety showers and eye baths are required. Storage tanks must be of approved design and construction and tested for leaks prior to service. Each tank should be surrounded by a dike of sufficient height to form a pool which will hold at least 10% more than the tank will hold. The deck in the storage area must be of impervious construction. It must not be soft or porous and must be easily flushed off. For ready storage and convenient shipping, auto fuel is packaged in 55 gallon drums. The drums have a special polyethylene liner for extra protection against leakage. To prevent overpressure, the liners are equipped with blowout plugs which should always be inspected before use to ensure proper working condition. The safety of auto fuel depends upon responsible handling and good housekeeping is mandatory. Storage and transfer sites must be kept free of all materials other than those used in these operations and leaks and spills are to be kept to a minimum. All storage and transfer equipment must be inspected frequently and immediate maintenance performed where necessary. One method of cleaning up a spill is to soak up the bulk of the propellant with rags or sawdust which should then be placed in a suitable container for transport to some other area and burned. Another method, useful when a large spill occurs, is to flush it away into a large body of water, if available, or into a disposal tank. In either method, final cleanup must be followed by a scrub down with detergent water solution. At the disposal tank, the auto fuel is heavier than water and settles to the bottom of the tank. And the clear water flows away to drainage. CO2 extinguishers are used on auto fuel fires because of their great cooling. Smothering is not totally effective as the fuel contains an oxidizer. Self-sustaining fires occur when the fuel temperature is high enough. This scene will demonstrate how large auto fuel fires may be controlled and extinguished by the use of water sprays. Water sprays are quite effective in fighting auto fuel fires for two good reasons. One, Water is a powerful cooling agent, and two, auto fuel sinks to the bottom and is covered by the water. This differs from avgas and diesel oil, which float on top and keep on burning.
Auto fuel, efficient, economical, logistically advantageous, represents a positive advancement in the Navy's constant effort to achieve safe, efficient, maximum performance in its propellants and weapons systems.